Over the past decades, we've struggled to see beyond the atmosphere lying between Earth and space. Even from mountaintop observatories, the atmosphere has blurred our view of the universe. And because the atmosphere absorbs certain forms of energy, our knowledge of celestial phenomena has been limited. One answer has been to go beyond the atmosphere. In fact, between the late 60s and the late 70s, NASA launched a series of special purpose observatories, revealing ultraviolet sources, such as very hot stars and very young stars. These satellites made tremendous breakthroughs and encouraged astronomers to move on to larger observatories, seeking answers about more distant galaxies, mysterious pulsars and quasars, and the universe itself. Astronomers envisioned the next step, a multipurpose observatory in space, one that could image farther and more clearly than its predecessors uncovering phenomena in ultraviolet, visible, and near-infrared regions of the spectrum, an observatory that could expand our perception to the outer reaches of the universe. That next step was HST, NASA's Hubble Space Telescope, with its precision optics and diverse array of scientific instruments. NASA is responsible for developing, operating, and maintaining this ground-sized space observatory. With its unparalleled goals, the Hubble Space Telescope poses a much greater challenge to operate than ground-based observatories or the satellites that came before it. Led by NASA, engineers, scientists, and researchers from universities, industries, and the European Space Agency have combined efforts to meet the challenge of operating Hubble Space Telescope. The result is one of the most complex operations and maintenance systems in the world, one that ensures quality observations and spacecraft performance into the next century. To take a closer look, we start at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore, Maryland. Aura, a consortium of American universities, operates the Institute for NASA. The Space Telescope Science Institute is the international center for science activities with HST. It plans the day-to-day -day observations and sets up the long-term science program. Astronomers first come in contact with the Institute when they submit their proposed science program. As with any major observatory, the demand for the telescope exceeds the time available. We expect to receive over 1,000 proposals a year, and only 200 can be conducted. A committee of international astronomers select the proposals based on their scientific merit. Because the HST offers several hundred instrument configurations, our scientists work with the selected researchers to detail their observations. Next, numerous proposals are incorporated into a week-long observing schedule that ensures the efficient use of every telescope minute. There are many, many factors involved in scheduling observations with the Space Telescope. There are many instruments on board the Space Telescope. Within the same instrument, there are several observing modes. Even the simplest observation requires using different filters. We may also have to revisit the same target at different times of the year. We want to maximize the time spent observing with the Space Telescope and minimize the time wasted moving the telescope around. Therefore, we will group the observations to happen in the same area of the sky. We also want to use the same instrument for long periods of time, even weeks at a time, to minimize switching instruments on and off unnecessarily. Before the telescope schedule can be completed, another essential factor is entered, the guide stars. To establish guide stars for operations, the Institute has converted 1,500 photographic plates of the sky into a catalog of 15 million stars. Using the catalog, the Institute's computer selects guide stars for each target. 
HST stabilizes on a target by finding and locking onto two guide stars with its precision guidance sensors. The sensors detect any minor drift from the guide stars and correct the spacecraft's position through the onboard computers. With the guide stars and other system factors incorporated, the Institute produces a week-long schedule which specifies when, where, and how HST's science instruments will be used. From the Institute, the science schedule is transmitted to the Space Telescope Operations Control Center. Located at Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, this is the nerve center of HST's ground system. The science schedule automatically goes into one of the control center computer systems, which adds commands for operating and maintaining the observatory. These new commands cover such operations as moving the telescope or pointing its communications antennas. The system also schedules links to NASA's communications satellites. Merging both the science and spacecraft commands, the computer generates a master schedule for the week. If this second-by-second second schedule were printed out, the stack would be one to two feet high. Commands are sent to HST's two onboard computers, which on an average day carry out over 12,000 commands. The spacecraft's safety is also monitored at the control center. A typical satellite has about 1,000 parameters that must be monitored. HST has about 6,000. These parameters include specific spacecraft temperatures, voltages, electrical currents, and the condition of its computers. Our engineers must instantly recognize the codes for each function, interpret their measurements, and take immediate action if something is unusual. Because the engineers are overrun with data, we became concerned about the potential for human error. To minimize this possibility, we are developing an artificial intelligence system that automates much of the analysis. If the system finds something amiss, it tells the operator. Eventually, it will also prescribe a solution for the irregularity. Before the actual observations begin, NASA must calibrate HST's various systems during a crucial seven-month period following launch. Marshall Space Flight Center, located in Huntsville, Alabama, was responsible for building HST. Early in the calibration process, Marshall personnel managed the spacecraft's initial checkout from Goddard's control center. At the beginning of deployment, the shuttle bay doors open and the orbiter applies power to HST. Communication is then established between the ground control center and the spacecraft to verify proper configuration and to activate basic systems for thermal safety. Next, the orbiter's arm lifts HST out of the bay so the telescope's solar arrays and antennas can be extended. The arm releases the observatory into orbit some 300 miles above the Earth. HST's solar arrays are oriented properly to convert the sun's energy into electrical power for the observatory. The orbiter stays nearby for about two days after release in case HST needs further assistance during this early critical period. Once we establish that the spacecraft can operate on its own, the orbiter returns to Earth. Meanwhile, ground control engineers continue to verify that major components are up and running and that the telescope is pointing properly. Next, through a long series of calibrations, the telescope mirrors, star trackers, fine guidance sensors, and rate gyros are aligned. At approximately the end of the first month, Marshall officially turns responsibility for HST operations over to Goddard. During the second month, Goddard conducts further telescope calibrations and early checkout of the science instruments. Subsequent checkout of the optics and the instruments occurs during the remaining five months. Only then can the long-awaited observations begin. To make these observations, HST's commands must travel an intricate path. The science commands from the Institute are integrated with spacecraft commands at Goddard's control center. Ultimately, the signals are relayed to a NASA tracking and data relay satellite, 
orbiting 23,000 miles above Earth. The commands then go into HST's onboard computers to be implemented. This path reverses when data gathered by an observation is sent back to Earth. With commands loaded into its computers, the telescope automatically proceeds with observations. In this case, HST pivots slowly to its new target. Light from the target goes down the telescope and hits the primary mirror. It reflects back to the secondary mirror. Reduced to a narrow beam, the light is aimed back to the focal plane just behind it. The image is directed to HST's fine guidance sensors, which locate and lock onto guide stars on either side of the target. With HST now centered on its target, the light travels into the science instruments, which will make the observation. The instrument's shutters open, the correct filter is selected, and HST begins its exposure. While most observations are pre-planned, 10% require real-time interaction at the Institute by scientists. Real-time observations with the Space Telescope defy pre-programming. For example, we want to observe the red spots on Jupiter. This is a complicated operation because the planet moves and it also rotates. In order to be able to do this, we have to take an early picture of the planet, send information down to the ground, and then have an operator make a very quick decision as to exactly where the instrument that is being used has to be pointed. This is a very challenging operation indeed. Within 24 hours of an observation, the observer can obtain the data from the Science Institute's Data Archive and Distribution Service. The investigator who submitted the proposal has exclusive rights to this information for one year. After this period, the data is available to scientists around the world. Serving as an HST library, the archive will distribute an equivalent of 500 million pages of information over a single year. The observations are distributed through worldwide astronomical computer networks, are through optical disks, magnetic tapes, and photographs. Astronomers can use this information at their home institution to further their own research. From this data, who can say what great discoveries will be made? Astronomers hope for answers about black holes, the evolution of galaxies, and the size of our universe. Looking to the future to ensure the continuous flow of such exciting data, NASA has created contingency plans. In contrast to the unexpected repair of the Solar Maximum Mission spacecraft in 1984, NASA has prepared for HST's on-orbit servicing. HST is designed and developed by NASA for on-orbit servicing by astronauts. Consequently, HST instruments and various components were developed to be modular. This allows the astronauts to replace degradable parts such as solar arrays, and batteries during routine servicing missions. The modular design also makes it possible to update the observatory with new instruments. During the first planned maintenance mission for the HST, we expect to remove one of the original scientific instruments and replace it with a near-infrared instrument. The first scientific instruments on the HST are sensitive to the ultraviolet and visible portions of the electromagnetic spectrum. When we add an infrared capability, we will be able to examine regions such as this, where stars are in the process of formation today, and we'll also be able to probe still further back into the early history of our universe. Hubble Space Telescope operations can be compared to the complexity and challenge of the operations necessary to send astronauts to the moon. The expertise of thousands of individuals has contributed to the innovative science instruments, computer systems, information systems, and maintenance hardware that constitute HST's operations network. This elaborate system supporting Hubble Space Telescope promises long-sought answers to universal questions, exciting discoveries to ponder, and possibly a new understanding of our universe.